Seven learners, good morning. I am your English teacher for today. My name is Mr. Demetrio Leonorio. You can call me Mr. Leonorio. Quite a long name, isn't it? Anyway, nice to meet you all. I hope you are all doing great and welcome to Valenzuela Live English 7. I know you're excited for another learning experience because hashtag learning English is fun. If you are ready, please hit the heart reaction icon and also have your notebook, pen, and learning packets ready because we are going to use the learning material prepared by Mrs. Editha Felerino, Master Teacher 1 of Lawang Bato National High School. Today, we are going to talk about the library skills. And our learning goal is to use a search engine to conduct a guided search on a given topic with a subscale to use appropriate mechanisms or tools in the library for locating resources. How about we play the guess this logo game? Are you in? I'm going to show you a logo or icon that you normally see on the internet. You have five seconds to guess the logo. Write your answer in the comment sections. Let's begin. Let's have the first one. What logo or icon is this? The answer is Bing.com. All right, let's have the second one. What logo is this? Google.com. You got it right. How about this one? What is this logo? The answer is ask.com. Wow, you did well. Next, the fourth 
icon or a logo. Yahoo.com. Easy peasy, right? Finally, this is the uh, the last one. Guess this logo. Your answer? It's DuckDuckGo.com. Did you get the last one right? All right, congratulations, learners, for doing that activity with me. By the way, what is common among those icons that we've just guessed? If you know the answer, you can write it in the comment section. They are all search engines. Can you repeat after me? Search engines. By the way, what is a search engine? According to Merriam Webster, it is a site on the World Wide Web that uses such software to locate keywords in other sites. In simple terms, it is a computer program that is used to look for information on the internet. For example, if you want to know the members of SB19, yes, I know you know who SB19 uh, is, just go to yahoo.com and type SB19 members. And Yahoo will give you a list of websites that contain those information. Uh, the, the stage name, real name, birthday, even the height and weight of the idol group's members. And um, if you are going to think about it, you know, it's, it's amazing how we can easily get information on the internet using search engines, right? And do you know that there are more search engines available aside from those we've talked about earlier? Yandex, AOL, Baidu, to name a few. The technological advancement has made the information we needed available at our fingertips. But, but, did you ever wonder what were people using to get information when the search engines were not yet available? Or what are you going to use if the search engine fails to provide you the information you needed? If you are going to look back in time, probably 20 plus years ago, there is a place where people go whenever they need to get information. But although I, I said 20 plus years ago, this practice is still relevant up to this day, especially if you are doing a research. Do you have any idea what place we are referring to? If you know the place we are referring to, you can type your answer in the comment section. If you answered or if you are thinking, the library, you got it right. What is a library? A library is a building or room containing collections of books, periodicals, and sometimes films and recorded music for people to read or borrow. We all know that the library houses hundreds or even thousands of books. So, for people to easily get the answers they needed, the library is divided into several sections. Also, to help us find the information more quickly and much easier, card catalogs are used. You might have questions in your mind about the words that I've just said. Sections and card catalogs. So first, let's talk about the sections in the library. We can talk about the uh, card catalogs uh, after that. So what I'm going to give you are just basic sections in commonly found, uh, uh, um, sorry, just basic sections commonly found even in small libraries. Number one, the, the first section is general reference. Can you repeat after me? General reference. Here, you can find general encyclopedic works like dictionaries, almanacs, atlases, directories, handbooks, manuals, indexes, and abstracts, etc. So let's say if you need to know the meaning of the word utopia, this is the section to go to. The second section is periodical section where you can find local and foreign journals, 
magazines, newspapers, government publications, and other forms of serial publication. Vertical files such as pamphlets, brochures, and newspaper clippings. So to get the latest, to get the latest news here and abroad, this is where you go. The third section is general collection or circulation section where you can find the main collection of the library like books in philosophy, uh, religion, social sciences, language, arts, pure science, applied sciences, literature, history, and geography. So this is where you can find the, the information about the topics that you study at school such as in Araling Panlipunan, so social, social science, history, language, even mathematics, literature, arts, and many more. The list goes on. The fourth section is Filipiniana section. Here you can find books published within the Philippines and written about the Philippines, its history, people, government, and culture. If you need to know the list of the uh, the list of the presidents of the Philippines, this is where you can find it. Can you name again the, the different sections of the library uh, that we've just uh, mentioned? You can type your answers in the comment section. I'll wait for you to, to type your answers. All right. So again, those four sections are the general reference, periodical section, general collection or circulation section, and Filipiniana section. Now that you are already familiar with the different sections of books in the library, you can easily locate your resources using the card catalog. Can you repeat after me? Card catalog. So have your pen and notebook ready to write down notes while we talk about the types and parts of card catalog. So first, let's define or get the meaning of card catalog. A card catalog is a cabinet of small drawers filled with cards for each book in the library. The cards are arranged alphabetically according to their top lines. That's the keyword, top lines. There are three types of card catalog. How many? Three. The first type is the title card. So the title of the book is written on top of the card, just like what you can see in our example. Living Effectively Through English, that's the title of the book. The call number 400.4 M4 is written on the upper left side of the card. Devina Morgan is the author of the book. If you, um, you will notice that the surname was written first on the card. Also, it was published in Canada by language linkages in 2002 and finally the book has 300 pages now the second type is the author card why do you think it's called author card yes you are right as the name suggests the name of the author is written on top of the card so the surname is written first Rasoff, that's the surname followed by the given name martin Next to it is the author's year of birth and death. The call number on the upper left side of the card contains the classification number and the author's number. The title of the book is Using Your High School Library 2nd Edition. It was published in New York by H.W. Wilson in 1964. It has 110 pages. It is also illustrated, which means there are pictures or graphical materials in it. When it comes to the subject of the book, it is all about so, uh, school libraries for high school, to, to be more specific. So we're down to the third type, and that is the subject card. The subject of the book is printed on the top of the card and written in capital letters it has the same parts as the first two types call number author's name title of the book 
publication information, and the number of pages. Wow! <laughs> that was a handful of information. Dear learners, now that you are familiar with the types of card catalogs and its parts, you should be able to answer the activities in your learning packets. I am confident that you can answer them. So to deepen our understanding of the lesson, let's answer some of the questions about the topic we talked about. Please write your answer in your notebook or in the comment section. You have five seconds to answer each question. Let's begin question number one. It is a computer program that is used to look for information on the internet. You have five seconds to answer. Question number two. It is a building or room containing collections of books, periodicals, and sometimes films and recorded music for people to read or borrow. You have five seconds to answer. Question number three. Which does not belong to the group? YouTube? Google? Or ask.com? Five seconds to answer. Now let's have question number four. What type of card catalog is this? Is this a title card, author card, or subject card? And finally, question number five. What type of card catalog is this? Title card, author card, or subject card? All right, now that you have written your answers, let's check how many correct answers you got. For number one, the correct answer is search engine. All right, congratulations for those who got it correctly. Number two, the answer is library. Remember, um, learners, wrong spelling wrong, so make sure you spelled it correctly. Number three, the answer is letter A, YouTube, because it's not an example of a search engine. Number four, it's subject card. And finally, for number five, it's an author card. Did you get all the answers right? Congratulations! We, your teachers, are so proud of you. And, uh, you know, grade 7 learners, I had a great time learning English with you today. We learned a lot of things. Uh, we learned that search engines are great tools to search for information available online. Nowadays, there are several search engines to choose from, such as Google, Yahoo, AOL.com, and, and many others. Also, a reliable and still relevant source of information is the library. This is where you should go, especially at times when we need to research or have an in-depth study about a topic. We also discovered that different sections in the library and the use of card catalogs will save us a lot of time searching for the information we needed and they make the process much easier. Time flies so fast! You might still have some questions about our about today's lesson and because of that I'll give you a chance to write your questions in the comments section and I'll wait for you to write them down
Okay, so the first question is from Lawang Bato National High School, my alma mater. So the question is, how can I find information using the search engine more effectively? This is a great question. The skill that you need to, to learn and develop is using the right keywords. Think of a keyword or keywords uh, that is or not that is or that are not too specific nor too broad for the information you are looking for. Once you have the right keyword or keywords, you need to apply your skimming and scanning reading skills. The second question is from Jen Tideleo National High School. What is the advantage of using a library instead of search engines? This is another interesting question. Nowadays that there is rampant spread of fake news that really makes us sad or misinformation, we really need to be more careful in assessing the re reliability of the information we get from the internet. The library is, if not 100%, almost 100% reliable source of information. That's the reason up to this day, libraries are still relevant and useful for research and other purposes. Also, libraries have adapted to the, to the changing times. You know, bigger libraries are using technology in organizing their resources such as the, the Online Public Access Catalog, or OPAC, which is an online bibliography that is available to the public. One last thing, we now have e-library. In Gente de Leon National High School, where I teach, we have a virtual library that you can access online. Okay, that wraps up our question and answer time. If you have more questions about this topic, your subject teacher will be much delighted to answer them for you. I'd like to thank you all for your active participation in our virtual English class for today. Please be as engaging as you are when you attend your follow-up discussion because your subject teacher will guide you in answering the activities in your learning packets. Wow, I had so much time, I had so much fun studying, and I hope you too. Always remember that English, uh, learning English will open doors of opportunities for you today and in the future. So don't ever stop learning despite our challenging times. In time, You'll reap the fruits of your labor. Again, this is Mr. Leonorio saying thank you, keep safe, and until next time.